together. We would like to welcome you all uh, to the, uh, well, how, how we're calling ourselves these days, North Sector uh, Zoom uh, region. Uh, it's great to be here. And uh, Carla, I want to share some thoughts with you and I'll close in a prayer. Well, I just wanted to um, say that it is an honor and a privilege to come together like this to worship our Lord and King. And I pray that we leave aside anything that might be preoccupying our minds this morning to worship him, to be the type of worshipers that he's seeking, that worship him in spirit and truth, as um, John 4.23 talks about. Um, thank you. Yeah, it is indeed a privilege. You know, I was uh, doing some studies on a on, uh, First and Second Timothy, and uh, it, it's so freeing for us to meet with each other every time we want, uh, not only on a Wednesdays and, and, and Sundays, and to have joy, to be able to, to talk to each other, to be able to be so reachable, uh, right, through smartphones, tablets, uh, laptops. Back then, they met in houses, or they met in caves, or it was hard to meet, it was hard to go to each other's places. They were persecuted. And I think uh, it reminded me a lot of uh, Romans 12, 4, 5, right? As in one body, we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, right, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. And this is something to treasure. I think uh, as we go through the service today, uh, that we, we can be encouraged by each other, by the laughters, by the, the jokes, you know, by the gangs, but even more so the fellowship, the brotherhood that we have. And if you're visiting with us, you know, uh, this is who we are. And uh, it, it, it touched my heart because we are like United Nations, right? We have people from all over the world, but uh, in Jesus, we are one. And uh, it doesn't matter the connectivity, it doesn't matter the device, it doesn't matter pandemic out there. And I appreciate that. So uh, let us, as Matthew 18, 20 says, right? Whatever that is, two or three gather in, a, in his name, there he will be with us. So let's pray for the service that we can be enlightened, can be inspired, and uh, can enjoy this awesome fellowship in Christ. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, it is truly a blessing to be here, uh, uh, part of a, a, a group, part of your body, uh, part of a church that loves you, Lord, and that want to worship you. I pray that you work through everyone uh, involved in the service. Uh, I'm looking forward to hear uh, uh, Rosenbaum preaching to us, uh, Lord, and I appreciate uh, Chris Hall and, and all the logistics that goes through it, the singers, uh, the body, Lord, encouraging each other. I pray, Lord, that uh, your spirit can touch our hearts, that we can have a great service, and those that are here with us will be able uh, to hear it later, focus on you, uh, and be in fellowship with you now and always. We love you, Lord. So just we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, guys. Uh, right now, we're going to have another worship song. When peace like a river attended my Oh, 
Amen. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed that. Those guys are really good, huh? That was excellent. Uh, really good. Well, right now I have the privilege of uh, introducing quickly a good friend of mine, one of the guys I've enjoyed watching grow uh, over the many years, as we all have. Uh, with that, I give you Mr. Nicholas Rosenbaum. Thank you, Christopher. It's uh, great to see you guys here. As, uh, as weird as it is to always be meeting on Zoom these days, I know we, we want to be together and in, uh, in, in person again. So hopefully, uh, I don't know, maybe that's a 2021 goal. But um, I also, I, I love that song too. What a, what a moving song. But, uh, you know, I know that there's been, uh, there's been a lot uh, going on in our world. Obviously, with the pandemic, that affects us every day in, uh, in a lot of different ways. Um, oh, I don't know. Did I just mess with your thing, Chris? I don't know. No, you're good, man. I just made you the okay. spotlight video because you're, you're the man. I want everyone to see you. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I, I wanted to see everybody else. But, um, yeah, anyway. So, you know, there's been a lot going on in our world. We have the, this pandemic that's been affecting us. Um, you know, we have a huge political divide in our nation, which is very clear. And, uh, you know, even last week with the, the shooting of, of Jacob Blake, um, you know, which sparked more pre protests, more unrest. I know everybody said it at one point or another, but, you know, 2020 has just been uh, a rough one in, in a lot of ways. And, and I know we've been just experiencing that. And so, you know, as I was thinking to myself, how can I, how can I encourage a discouraged group of people, I thought about, well, maybe I should talk about debt uh, because that's encouraging. And, uh, you know, it's just something that uh, I, I think we can all relate to it. Um, and for me, one of my, one of my big goals for, for 2020 is just to become uh, debt free financially. And I was able to pay off my, uh, my car debt a couple months ago, which was really cool. And uh, now I'm working on my student loans. And so I kind of, I had this plan to, to be totally debt free by the end of the year. And, and I think I can do it. Um, I think with, with Corona, there's been a, just a lot of changing, you know, going on. And I've had to change a lot of my goals that I had. And, you know, going into 2020, I was thinking one way and then, you know, life happened. And so you have to adjust. So, um, but I don't want to give up that goal because I, I know that I can get there. And that would just be awesome to, to get those out of the way. But, uh, you know, I know that debt is just one of those things that we can, uh, that we can all relate to, I think, for the most part. And, you know, a, a mortgage, I know many of you have a mortgage, which in my mind is, you know, the ultimate debt. Um, you know, a lot of us millennials, we don't, we don't have mortgages. Um, we're, we're getting there, we're working on it. But, uh, you know, student loans is kind of uh, our mortgage right now. And so, uh, I think there, there's a few, a few fancy millennials out there and they, and they have houses and everything, but, uh, you know, I'm not there yet. But, uh, you know, according to Forbes.com, uh, there's approximately 45 million people in the U.S. that owe money on their student loans. And that's a big number. Um, and and uh, altogether, it's, it's about $1.5 trillion dollars. Uh, of student debt in America. And that makes it the, the second biggest debt crisis in our country, uh, which is right behind mortgages. And it, and it is referred to as a crisis. And in the, uh, the graduating college class of 2017, the average debt, debt leftover per student was between 28 and $29,000, which is roughly in the neighborhood of uh, a yearly salary for many entry level jobs, uh, which many of those graduates are, are likely to have. So, you know, it's, it's a big deal. It's something that is, is on my mind a lot because I'm, I'm in the middle of it right now. Um, and it really affects me in a, a very deep and, and personal way. There, there's, just a, there's just a dislike, you know, for, for this, this idea that someone that someone kind of owns me in a way, or at least owns my education or owns my possessions until I'm able to pay them back. You know, and like I said earlier this year, it was, uh, it was great to pay off my car. That, that, was a, that was a great feeling, you know, and I didn't even think of it, but they, they, they sent me the car title in the mail, almost like they're saying, you know, you'd, 
you thought that you owned your car all these years, but now you actually do. And I was like, oh, that didn't occur to me that I, I didn't actually officially own it until they sent me that title. And I don't know, there, there's just something about the whole thing that is kind of bothersome, doesn't sit well with me. And I think, you know, kind of at, at the core of it for me is, uh, it's this idea that, that somebody else is, is kind of making decisions for me, um, or at least about how, you know, I have to spend my money. And, you know, I want to live more independently, but I can't because I owe money. And until I pay them back, they kind of have that, that ball and chain on me. Um, you know, and in and, and, and Proverbs and the Bible, it tells us to, uh, you know, to pay off our, our debts as quickly as we can. And in, in Proverbs 6, it says, allow no sleep to your eyes. Uh, to free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, you know, that you should bring that kind of an attitude as you, as you pay off any debt you have. Um, and during the month of July, for me, I, uh, I had a little scare where I thought I was actually going to end up in, uh, in more debt than I'm already in and, uh, and of a worse kind in, in credit card debt. So yeah, I'm in uh, the first year of, of working at the, the school that I'm at right now. And uh, I didn't realize that they didn't pay their staff during the month of July. And so, uh, you know, July is basically the, the month of, uh, of summer vacation. So, you know, it makes sense that the, the payments would stop, um, but I just didn't realize that in, until pretty late in the month. And uh, I had been spending money like I thought I was going to get paid. So. You know, you just you get into one of those little moments where uh, you get into a little bit of a panic mode. You're like, OK. What am I going to do? Um, you know, so naturally I, I pray to God, you know, I pray. All right, God, you know, help a brother out. Uh, please just you know, help me to, to get out of this. Um, I don't know how you can do that, but just help a brother out. <laughs> Um, you know, hoping that God would obviously provide a way for me to, to cover those expenses, but um, also feeling like at the same time, he might, he might kind of make me feel the burn a little bit. Like he might make me uh, feel the consequences of my actions and, and he might not provide me that extra money, you know? Um, so I, I applied for unemployment benefits for, uh, for one month and uh, I explained to them my situation and, you know, basically that it was, it was my fault that I, I didn't have money <laughs> um, and, and that I was employed, but it was, there was just some confusion. And basically I was just asking for their grace really was what it was all about. And so I, I sent in the application and knowing that they would be fully in their rights to reject the claim um, since they are the Department of Unemployment Assistance and I'm not unemployed. So, you know, they would be fully within their rights. And, uh, you know, I, I sent it out and I waited a couple of weeks for their response, you know, prayed about it some more, worried about it some more, just waiting, hoping, wishing. And, uh, you know, then a few weeks later, I see a, a message that they, they sent me on their website and it said that they, they had accepted the claim. And not only were they gonna give me enough money to, to pay those expenses off, uh, they were gonna give me more than enough money. And that was just such a, just such a good feeling, you know, like, hallelujah, thank you, God, you're the man, you know, coming through once again, helping, helping a brother out. Um, you know, it was just, it was such a, such a relief uh, in, those, in those moments just to feel bailed out, you know? And, and I'm sure many of you have been in situations like that before. Uh, I'm sure that you can relate. And, and I think that, uh, again, debt is just one of those things that, that we can all relate to. And the fact that, you know, almost all of us have it, none of us like it, and we're all trying to get rid of it. And, and it's just one of those things. And, and if you don't have any uh, financial debt yourself, uh, I can guarantee you that you do have some spiritual debt on your part. And so that, that's really what I wanna talk about this morning. Um, and so I want to share a scripture here in Colossians 2. I'm going to try to share my screen and do that the right way. Uh, let's see. Does that, does that work? You guys seeing that? Yeah, Nick, we can see it. Sweet. All right, Colossians 2. 
verses 13 to 15 says, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the, the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, triumphing over them by the cross. Go back to my, my screen here. You know, in, the, in that scripture, I just see a, uh, I, I see a basic truth that we just need to be reminded of that we need to hear over and over again. And that's just that when all we deserved was spiritual death, God made us alive in Jesus. I think we, we, we always need to hear that over and over again until we die. Um, you know, the, the world is constantly telling us messages like, you know, you, you get what you deserve and you get what's coming to you that that karma is going to get you back somehow it just that there's like an equality for the 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 actions that you have to the consequences right and you know a lot of what we experience in our lives uh is really based on a lot of that and based on uh you know whatever merits we have right whether that's degrees experience training uh any other thing that that, that can get us ahead in this world um, but I'm just so grateful that, that God operates differently than that. You know, the scripture says that God canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. And to me, that's just such a perfect description of what debt really feels like is that it stands against you and condemns you. And the truth is that you know, God doesn't just cancel our debts, but he really does give us so much more than that. You know, have you ever been, have you ever been in sin and felt like God should let you experience the consequences of your actions? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a weird feeling, a, a weird mixture of, on the one hand, you know, you want to be forgiven, but at the same time, you know that you really don't deserve it. And so you almost feel like God should punish you back into a place of good standing. You know, almost like if I, if I just serve my sentence, you know, I can be good with God again. I know that, that I've, I've, I've had that thought uh, many times throughout my, my Christian walk. And, you know, when uh, a month or two ago, when I applied for that money from unemployment, you know, there was definitely a part of me that said, I don't, I don't deserve this money. You know, I really, I shouldn't get this. Um, it's my own fault that I'm in this situation. You know, maybe God should make me dig myself out. Maybe that would be the right thing to do. It builds character, right? Like we like to say that. We like to say that in New England. Um, you know, and, but that's, that's just not how, how God thinks. You know, he operates differently than that. And, you know, there's plenty of times too where God does use situations to build our character. But I think in regards to, to his grace and, and in regards to canceling our debt, he doesn't think that way. And I, I love the fact that God isn't a, he's not a just enough God. You know, he really loves to give generously to us. You know, when, when Jesus turned the, the water into wine, um, you know, he didn't give them just enough wine. He, he filled the jars to the brim, it says, and he gave them the best wine uh, that he could offer. And when he fed the 5,000, same thing, you know, everyone ate and were, was satisfied and there was 12 basketfuls of food left over. And it just, it shows that God isn't a, he's not a just enough God, but he wants to give us a lot more than that. And even in my situation uh, a month ago, he didn't give me just enough to pay my bills. It was more than enough. And I just think that's such an amazing quality for God to have. You know, and, and from all this, this giving on his part, you know, what does he expect from us in return? Just accept it, you know, just, just accept it and, and be grateful and, and move on. You know, the, the, the fact that he already knows that we can't pay him back. He already, he already knows that even as much as we 
try to in, in our own ways, I think. Um, but this is, this is the whole reason that, that Jesus came. He knew before the creation of the world and, and before the creation of us that we would get ourselves into an unpayable debt. And that's the whole plan of salvation in the Bible is, is based around that fact. And to me, it's almost, it's almost funny how we can get ourselves into a mindset of thinking that we can, that we can pay God back in a way and that we can almost be like the, the, the rightful owners of our salvation. Um, and I, it's kind of a, it's kind of a subtle thing. I don't think we would ever say that, but I, I think it's a, it's a thought that we can have. And it's almost like saying to God, like, okay, where, God, where do I make my payments to you? Where, where do I send my, my righteousness bucks along? How do, how do I, how do I get that to you? Do you have PayPal? Do you have Venmo, Cash App? How do I, how do I transfer this along? And God's like, no, you, you, you don't get it. <laughs> this is just a gift. Please just accept it and be grateful. And that's really all he wants us to do. And I think he knows that if we are truly grateful for, for this forgiveness that he's given us, every other good thing is gonna flow from that place. You know, all those things that, that we're supposed to do as Christians, right? Those go from being our, our religious duty to our heart's delight. And, and that's, a, that's a super important shift. I think to take place. And, and that's something that I've been going after personally um, for some time now. And I think for all of us here, uh, since most of us have, have been around in the Christian race for a while, you know, that's, uh, that's a struggle to keep that motivation over the years. And I think everybody here has been on both sides of, of that equation um, at one time or another. But, you know, this morning, I, I really want to ask you guys, honestly, how grateful are you for the fact that your sins are forgiven? You know, if, if someone came to you and paid off your entire mortgage, paid off your entire student loans or, or whatever kind of money you owe, and you were totally just debt free, no worries, would you be more grateful for that than for the fact that your name is written in heaven? I think that's a, just a good thing to reflect and, and think about and ask yourself, wh where does my gratitude really lie? You know, and, and for me, I've been, uh, I've been a disciple for, for 11 years now. August 2nd was my, uh, my spiritual birthday. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of different seasons in that time. Um, and I feel like the, time, the times that I've been the most grateful for God's forgiveness are right after the moments where I really blow it. You know, and uh, honestly, those times for me, they, they remind me of, of what I used to almost always feel like before I was a disciple. Um, and, you know, it's human nature. We, we all blow it from time to time and we all, we all sin and fall short, right? But I think just it's important to let those moments remind you of how good you have it with God and his kingdom. And so, you know, on a practical level, um, you know, how do we experience this gratitude? How do we feel connected to it? Um, I don't think that's, a, that's an easy thing to do. Um, at least for me, it, it definitely feels like a, like a moving target, something that I, that I always have to uh, go after. But, you know, I think two things come to mind as far as the, the practicals. First thing is just think and meditate. Uh, think about where you were at before you were a disciple and where you're at now. And look at, look at that transition that's happened in between and, and just remember what it was like studying the Bible. Remember what it was like coming to God for the first time and the, the, the love and, and the encouragement and the, the, the gratitude that you felt when you first you know, came out of the waters of baptism. Um, you know, just think about that and, and reflect for a while and, and think about where your life would be at now if God had never intervened. You know, what, where would you be at? Would, would you even be alive? Um, I, I think we, we would just be in such a different place if God had never intervened in our lives. And so that's, that's the first thing. Just take some time, meditate, reflect, and think about just what God has done in your life. And then secondly is 
just pray. <laughs> um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to sound cliche here or just kind of give you uh, obvious points, but um, for me, you know, I think about the, I think about a lot of the Psalms um, that David or, or other people wrote, you know, and, and you read these Psalms and you, you watch these people, they start in a, in a negative, faithless and discouraged place. And they, they pray about those things. And then by the end of the, the Psalm, their perspective has shifted, you know, and their heart and their mind is in a different place from the beginning. And, and it's really cool to, to see that, that transition happen. Um, you know, and I believe that we can find a lot of gratitude uh, even in our, our prayer times. And so you can, you can start with ingratitude and move towards gratitude. And so those are, those are just two ideas um, that maybe you can even uh, put into practice this week uh, before you go to work or, or, or whatever your, uh, your schedule is, you know, just think and, and, and pray about these things. And, and I think it, it, it helps me to feel more grateful for the, the things that I have. And so um, let me share my screen one more time. And I want to uh, share one more scripture before we transition into communion. And this is in uh, Psalm chapter 32. It says, blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, and my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave me, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. You know, I, I really love that scripture. I, I haven't... All right, I hadn't read it in, a, in quite a long time. And then uh, the other night when we were having our, uh, our weekly family group, uh, Francisco mentioned that scripture and we read it together. And, and it just, it, uh, it definitely hit me. And, and I think the, the simple forgiveness of sins is a huge and real blessing that, that all of us have, uh, or I think that most of us have. And we, we walk around with it all the time. Um, but yet how, how grateful for it are we really? And, you know, as, as I'm, you know, preaching to all of you, I am a hundred percent preaching this sermon at myself as well, because I, I think I can be a lot more grateful in this area than I am. And, and I've even in preparing this message, I've definitely, it's been challenging to me to, to really try to make this, uh, to make myself personally connected to this as well. And so, you know, as we take a few minutes here to, uh, to shift into the, the time of communion and uh, remembrance of Jesus, you know, let's just meditate on all this together and meditate on the, the magnitude of God's forgiveness and really how good it is that we can be debt free in his kingdom. Let's pray together. God, it's uh, just great to be able to be with you right now, to meet with, uh, with other believers and, and be able to, uh, you know, just share our faith together and, and think about you ultimately, God. Um, I pray that each and every one of us can feel connected to the, the forgiveness that we all have and, uh, and that we can really take it to a deeper level, feel more grateful for it than, than we do. Um, or if we're at a great place already, just to, to keep going with that and, and to, uh, just to always feel grateful for this, uh, this forgiveness of sins that you provide. God, you are so good to us, um, so much more than we deserve. And I just pray that we can remember that right now. God, uh, we love you very much. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Nick, thank you uh, so much for that, uh, for that message. Uh, right now, I think we're going to have uh, Maria Joseph is going to come up and, and give some contribution and announcements. Maria, it's all yours. Hi, church. It's so good to be here with you. And I want to thank Nick for his message. I really appreciate his point that um, God is not a just enough God. And we really worship such a God that is so incredibly kind and good to us to give us more than what we need. And it's great for me to see Nick. I remember he grew up with Ian and I've seen him grow up to be this man who can preach to us and inspire us and challenge us. So I really appreciate you, Nick, and your message. Thank you. And um, it's time now for our weekly contribution. I just want to commend the church for in this crazy, crazy time for being faithful to God in the way that we give back to him. Um, this is for the members of the Northeast region. You can go to our website, give.bostonchurch.org. Um, and you can also mail a check to the Boston Church of Christ office in Framingham. And if you do that, just write Northeast region in your memo. And now we can go to our announcements. Um, I won't do anywhere near as an exciting job as Brandon used to do in our announcements. But um, this Wednesday, September 2nd, we have our Zoom midweek. And then um, next Sunday, September 6th, we have our Northeast Region Zoom worship service at 945. And this is especially encouraging to me because it's our teen and preteen camp led service. My lovely assistant, Vicki, my daughter-in-law, is helping me. Um, we have our SEC spiritual enrichment classes beginning Wednesday, September 9th. Um, it'll be a 7.15 fellowship time, 7.30 start time. The men's class will be breaking barriers like Jesus in the 21st century. And the women's class will be a portrait of Jesus from the Gospel of John. And we'll have breakout discussion groups with that and all classes will be recorded. And our last announcement is Sunday, October 25th is our Generosity Sunday, our annual missions contribution. And please be praying for this because it's such an incredibly important year with everything going on to support the churches throughout New England and Europe who depend on our support. And at this time, Chris Hall will give us instructions on our fellowship groups. Bye church, love you all. Thank you, Maria, very much. Uh, and thank you to Nick as well. I just wanna echo what Maria said. You did a great job, Maria. Uh, Nick also great job reminding us of the debt that we certainly do owe all of us owe, uh, and that we can never really pay back. So thank you so much. At this time, we're going to break into uh, what we're calling breakout rooms, uh, and really, they're fellowship groups. They're an opportunity for you guys as, as members of the church, as family, uh, to just spend some time fellowshipping with each other uh, and having, having some great conversations and just really connecting. I know for me, connecting during this time has been something I've had to purposefully do. It, do it, it doesn't happen as automatic as it normally does, and I've had to be purposeful. So please use this time to purposefully connect with members of the family here in the North. Uh, in just a moment, I will break you up into your, into your groups. And we do have a, a, a question that you guys can start off, um, just a topic uh, that you can talk about if you want, uh, but also you can feel free to talk about whatever may be on your heart or whatever the Spirit's leading you to. So let me just bring my thing back here. I will switch the slide. So the question that you guys can discuss is, how has God's grace helped or changed your life? Uh, again, I know it'll be a great time uh, for you guys to discuss and meet. So in just a moment, you'll see on your screen, you'll see a little option to, uh, to go ahead and, and join the breakout room. Just go ahead and press accept and you'll be in your breakout room. All right, so let's see. All right, here we go. You should all see those options. Feel free to accept. Again, uh, thank you so much for your time. We will not be coming back together. You'll, we'll, you'll be dismissed from your breakout rooms. Thanks, guys.